Obama's negation of hostilities in Libya draws criticism. The White House has officially declared that what's happening in Libya is not hostilities. That's like if uh, I say I'm God and I walk up and shoot you five times in the head and say, Bob isn't dead on the ground with his head blown off. Meanwhile, you're on the ground, you're, the whole top of your head's blown off, you're dead, there's a big pool of blood, and I say, he's not dead. This isn't war, it's kinetic. And it turns out top military um, uh, advisors, the top Pentagon lawyers, uh, and by the way, they're now reporting uh, throughout the week, uh, even the New York Times says, the, the president's never gone against these lawyers. The lawyers have said, it's illegal, you got to get congressional approval, it's a war, you're making a fool out of yourself saying it's not a war, Mr. Peace Prize winner. And uh, they said, eh, let them eat cake. And so that's now happening. But the good news is, just a month ago, the Washington Post and others were agreeing it wasn't a war. They tried to sell us this manure and tell us that it was chocolate brownies. People didn't even take a bite. They smelled it and said, we know what that is. So the point is they're losing even more credibility because their lies have gotten more brazen. Meanwhile, NATO loses contact with one of their drone choppers. It's so cowardly, they don't even have you know, troops in the helicopters. Huge marine drill confirms ground invasion of Libya. That's linked on DrudgeReport.com. Uh, from uh, Infowars.com, Kurt Nemo's report. Kinetic military action of war. Libyans are still dead. Uh, UN exploits Libyan refugees, calls for taxing risk nations. Another scam. Uh, that's just some of the news we have. But to break it down, what we, he said a year ago, he said it's, it's going to be war. When the economy implodes, when Europe starts going down, and he listed the countries in the order, we all thought it would be Portugal next, but now it's Italy imploding. But that, that was after Portugal. The point is, it's on. The Chinese are accelerating their dumping uh, of T-bills, FT headline, Financial Times. Trades reveal China shifts from dollar. Uh, joining us via video Skype uh, is Gerald Salente. Always great to have him. You should subscribe to his great journal. Invaluable info at trendsresearch.com. That's trendsresearch.com. Gerald, thanks for coming on on short notice. Oh, always my pleasure. You know that, Alex. It was great having dinner with you in New York. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I'd been up for two days covering Bilderberg because my guys were up, you know, at three o'clock in the morning my time and hadn't had any sleep. So I'm sorry. I was like a zombie. No, no, it was a great night. It was uh, fun to get together with everyone. It was awesome. Uh, now that we've dispensed with the more enjoyable pleasantries, uh, you've, you've really called it accurately. So, so, so tell us what's going to unravel with this uh, great world war that they're calling peace. What we're going to look, what we have to look at now is what's going on in, in Europe, particularly with Greece and Spain. The people are taking to the streets. They know the deal, that there's, not, there's no change at the ballot box. If you go to the ballot box, there's a jack-in-the-box in there, just another political clown. So they're demanding real change they can believe in. So there's no outs in this. For example, you pick up the news and you see one day Greece is going to be bailed out. The next day they're not. Greece is only a small player with this. And what is the bailout? The bailout means you have a second mortgage. Now they're going to give you a third mortgage. And the IMF is coming in to oversee the deal. All the IMF is, it's the International Mafia Federation. They're the loan sharks of last resort. You need the money, you go to the loan shark. But, you know, they're respectable. You know, they have three names in their name, like Dominique Strauss-Kahn. You know, and they, they have, loan you the money that they got from you in the bailout. I mean, that's, a, that's a beautiful system. Oh, it is. And here's the deal. Where they tell you, go tax the people. I want the money. You tax the people, you don't bring in enough money. Then they come up with another line. They say we have to privatize. Privatize, I want your bridge. I want your, your water supply. I want your toll road. Gabish, that's all it is. It's a mafia. They're shaking down these countries. And by the way, people should understand, that's what happened in Egypt that set it up for what happened now. They sold the country out under, quote, privatization, which means taking valuable public resources and selling them to your criminal buddies for pennies on the dollar. So now it's imploding worldwide. As I said a year ago, follow the timeline. The crash of 29, the Great Depression, 
currency wars, trade wars, real wars. The panic of 08, the Great Recession slash Depression, currency wars, trade wars, real wars. We heard public enemy number one today, Osama bin Bernanke, say he's considering more stimulus. Of course. Great. Devalue the dollar more. Drive the people deeper into the ground. Make them pay more for everything because the banks need the money. They have to keep the Ponzi scheme going. That's what stimulus is, keeping the Ponzi scheme going, but it's all collapsing. And as I said, when it all collapsed, they take you to war. Did you see the quote? I reread it yesterday, uh, a few months ago, with the Liberty Dollar that had been operating for 13 years, coining their own silver and gold. Even AP admitted that's totally legal. There's hundreds of companies that do it. But because he criticized the Federal Reserve, they arrested him. Had the federal jury, who convict people 98% of the time, uh, that shows how, how, how fake they are, convict him and then and then the u.s attorney on the fbi website said these people are terrorists we're going to get anybody that's got gold and silver anybody that tries to undermine our financial system here they are the the foreign banks have done this the goldman sachs have done this they're wrecking us and then they're now blaming uh, a, a company with gold and silver coins that never pretended to be government gold and silver, publicly criticizing it, saying have alternative currencies. We got a whole bunch of states moving to do the same thing. And they're saying, you're terrorists, we're coming after you. And now the Forex came out and said that the way they interpret the new laws, that by July 15th, private sale of gold and silver will be illegal. And the word is now the feds are talking about trying to confiscate. I mean, these people, and, and I guess America will line up and say, because that's what happened in 1933, Okay, here's our gold and silver. Give us devalued paperback, and we'll line up, and the cops will have machine guns, and we'll just give it to them, and, and, and then they'll publicly ship it to Goldman Sachs and, and Bank of America like they did in 1933. I mean, I, mean, there's, I can't believe the stuff they're doing, Gerald. Well, again, it was all predicted, all foreseeable. It's the biggest bank robbery in world history, and the banks are doing the robbing. And the only way this is going to change is to bring down the banks. And by the way, IMF is actually a verb, like IMF or IMF'd up by doing business with them. That's all it is. It's one big international mafia federation. They are robbing us in broad daylight and the people are taking it. And that's what really discourages me the most because they're still looking for a political solution. There's no such thing. It's an oxymoron. There's no political solutions. Very well said, uh, Gerald. And, and, but, but there are some good signs. I mean, Obama says these aren't wars. The mainstream media tries to play along with the emperor is wearing a beautiful outfit. And enough of us stood up like the little kid and said, hey, the emperor's naked. And now all of the media, they're going, yeah, Obama's a kook. Yeah, it is a war. He's super unpopular. Louis Farrakhan acted like he was the second coming. Now Farrakhan has called Obama a murderer. I mean, uh, I mean, Obama's stock is going down really, really, I mean, as fast as horse and buggy whip stock went down when Henry Ford opened up his assembly line. Yes, but it's, it's only temporary. It changes on a dime. Look at the Wimpocrats, those, those, those wiener liberals that aren't condemning Obama for what he's doing regarding the War Powers Act. Could you imagine if Bush tried to pull this off? They'd be screaming bloody murder. Look at the way the country rallied around Obama with the Osama versus Obama story. You know, you remember the one, you know, we got o o o Osama and now he's wearing cement shoes and swimming with the fishes. You saw how the people bought that That was almost tale. as good. I, Obama could come out and say that July 25th, an, a, a large elf from the North Pole will come down your chimney, and I believe 35% of the public would actually be waiting at their chimneys for Santa Claus. Exactly. So what's going to happen, Alex, as we predict this, as we're looking forward, watch for a false flag or a real crisis to happen. 
and the people will rally around Obama. This is as old as, as uh, you know, the, the Hitler days, you know, Goering. What you do is you use fear and hysteria to rally the people around the, the political leader. They did it with Bush. People forget how unpopular he was before 9-11. And there's a guy that couldn't walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, he becomes a huge hero. What do you think so of the, Rick Perry? Because he's been lying and saying he'd never run. We knew internally from people that know him he is running. Uh, he's a protege of uh, TB, uh, also known as Karl Rove. And... Uh, now he said, oh, I'm going to break my pledge not to run. Uh, I may run now. I, I mean, j j these guys lie even when there's no reason to lie. Turns out he was the uh, campaign manager of Al Gore, and this is what people think is a conservative. Yeah, and it, the whole thing is if you're voting for the Republicans or Democrats, you're voting for the two-headed one-party system. You're voting for a continuation of, of corruption, lies, bigotry, hypocrisy, and helping out their big buddies. And by the way, we're coming out with a trend alert tomorrow, or, uh, or, or the next day, hopefully tomorrow, and it's going to be the Salenti solution. And essentially what it is, is that the only way that I can see a more positive future, because people ask me all the time, I come up with the problems, what are the solutions, is a direct democracy. They don't represent us. Perry doesn't represent me. Gore didn't represent me. Bush doesn't. Clinton doesn't. Obama doesn't. Gore doesn't. None of them represent us. They represent the people that give them the most amount of cash to stuff in their pockets. They call it campaign contributions. Adults call it bribes and payoffs. So on issues of war, on immigration, on health care, on education, do what they do in Switzerland. Let the people vote. And so what we're going to be doing is launching a major effort for the country to move toward a direct democracy. They don't represent me and they don't know better than I do. I don't know everything. I only know what I know, but I don't need some jerk that's getting payoffs telling me some little wiener telling me what I should believe, what I should do, and what's in my self-interest. I'm educated, and here's the example they're going to use. Mr. Salenti, it's not going to work. Why not? We could vote online. Oh, you can't vote online. There'd be fraud. Oh, yeah, you mean like in Illinois? Like in Florida? No, there won't be fraud. We could do what they do if you take it like this. If I could bank online, I could vote online. If I could bank online, I could vote online. Put the power back into the hands of the people. Bring America to we the people. You know, I hear what you're saying about the Swiss model of direct uh, democracy. But at the same time, uh, they've super navigated and circumnavigated the Bill of Rights and Constitution. The founders were concerned about a direct democracy because they can stage a new false flag or, a, or an OBL rabbit out of the hat and then stampede people in a direct democracy. 51% could vote to enslave 49% of us, but, but we could have a direct democracy through a uh, constitution and a, re and a Republican form of government where there's the... Uh, you know, basic codes that then can't be overridden and, and will we still have courts involved let me hear more of your solution and your model on the other side uh, because the globalists uh, have found a way to circumnavigate uh, our constitution bill of rights and it's not that that's failed it's we the people that have let these crooks do this as long as we're apathetic any system can be bamboozled and finagled but we'll be right back with Gerald Salente I've drawn some silly uh, quick drawings of the uh, the two-headed monster of the Democratic and Republican Party symbolized by Rick Perry and Obama and they've just trampled over the skeletal remains of the Republic and are uh, leaving some droppings uh, behind for us and here's another representation of the bloated government and there's the people another skeleton suck dry and uh, the uh, New World Order government uh, is uh, telling us to tighten our belts, but that they want more money and that they made the sun come up this morning, that they made the grass grow and the flowers sprout. 
We owe everything to them. So, um, there you have it, my friends. There you have it. Uh, going back to Gerald Salente, uh, as, as we went to break, I made my comments about I mean, what type of specific direct democracy are you talking about? Because because I see your point, and you're saying you know a, a solution, but wouldn't they just blow up some more World Trade Centers and say the Easter Bunny did it? And that well, they're, well, they're going to do that anyway, and, and they're, they're rigging the game the way it is. So we're not getting anything. You take TARP, for example. The vast majority of the people were against it. Take Libya. If they had a vote, people would say no. Let the people vote. Let the people vote. If this, this isn't a democracy, representative democracy. As I said, the only people they represent, the politicians, are the people that give them a lot of cash. No, you're right. The, the current system has totally been taken over, and, and Congress is just like a vending machine, and the ruling globalists just put quarters in it and then get the world in return. That's right. And, and you know, I worked up in Albany, as, as you know. I was the assistant to the secretary of the Senate. And I was also, in many years, I worked in D.C. I know what it looks like. I was a government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. So, I mean, I know how these things work. And, and it's the same thing, you know, money talks. And the, and the politicians are talking for the money. And so what I'm saying is, on critical issues, whether it's immigration, whether it's war, whether it's education, name the major issue, health care reform, let the people vote. And we have no vote. We have, and here's the line that they keep throwing to us every election. Well, you know, if you don't vote, you get what you deserve. What do you mean you get what you deserve? A lesser of two evils? Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, the last person I used to go out with, she was terrible. Oh, this one, she's just rotten. I mean, what lesser of two evils? We're about to go to break and come back with five more minutes. I just want to point out that our article, Rick Perry announces presidential run, uh, and, and he's going to run. He lied about the fact that he wouldn't run. He's now breaking that pledge. So we're just announcing for him because we have sources inside, 100%. It's a done deal. And this video exposes a lot of what he's doing, so please help us get that out to everybody. Also, while you're at it, you can visit uh, all the great websites uh, of Gerald Salente, uh, trendsresearch.com. You can also put in another URL and uh, find the great journal, and folks can sign up today uh, for it and, and uh, get your trends alerts as well, can't they? Yes, they can. And also, we're going to have new specials at, on the uh, Trends in the News features. We now have Hans Himmler, and he's America's favorite Nazi. He escaped Germany, hidden Argentina, and now he's come to America because it feels like home to him. So we're adding a lot more content to the tre for the Trends Journal subscribers. So you're going to show the other side, pro New World Order now. You've got a new new contributor. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this one really hits home. Absolutely. Great job on that. Gerald Salente is our guest. And for the next five minutes, we're just flat out of time here. Uh, but good things are happening on many fronts. Um, Texas has brought back the bill. Uh, to uh, enforce the law and arrest TSA agents when they molest people for official oppression. Uh, so many other things are happening, but on the economic front, things are getting scary. And this, this hoax, Gerald, that we haven't been in a recession for the last few years and that it's not a depression and all these fake numbers that come out of the Ministry of the Truth, uh, known as uh, the federal government, uh, now we have the Financial Times headline, Trades revealed China shift away from dollar. And they came out last week and said, hey, you guys have already technically defaulted, as we pointed out years ago. So, uh, and of course, Bernanke's going to do QE3. I mean, the dollar is going to end up like the peso. Uh, this is going to be hellish, uh, Gerald. It is. And look what's happening. For example, in Brazil, the Brazilians are coming flooding into Florida now. Their currency has gone up 45% against the dollar. You look at the press prices in Florida already, they're buying up properties, you know, for pennies on the dollar. So it's like going to Mexico decades ago when the dollar was king. Now Latin America is going to come here because because they're going to be the rich people compared to us. That's right. And that's why I call Osama bin Bernanke, you know, the public enemy number one. He's the, you know, he's the doctor death of the economy. And, and he just keeps killing it because he makes our, he makes our... Hard work, earn less. He makes us all work much harder and get less for it 
by devaluing our dollar so the money junkies could keep getting their fix. Again, look at the data you just mentioned. Housing starts. Oh, they just, house sales are the lowest in six months. It just came out today. Six months? You mean they're worse now than in January, in February, in March? You're supposed to have the spring bloom. They're in a depression. We're in a depression. And as I said, they're marching us off to war. Mark my words, Alex. Obama will have the people dancing in fear once again because that fear bandwagon began to roll on May 1st with that phony hit against Osama bin Laden. And it's just going to keep popping up every time they sink in the polls. Hey, remember Clinton used to do it. Monica Lewinsky, let's bomb Baghdad. Monica Lewinsky, let's send in some cruise missiles and wipe out some Al-Qaeda somewhere. They do it all the time, and they're going to do it again. And later it even comes out that they issue fake terror alerts for political purposes. Governor Ridge even writes a book. They make money off of their lies. Bush writes a book that he ordered torture and makes money off of it while he sent people that follow the orders to prison. Yeah, and, and as you said, what Farrakhan said, called uh, Obama murderer in the White House. I mean, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue is murderer's row. You know, go back to the two Bushes. Go back to Clinton. Go back to Obama. Could anybody call a mass murderer what they are? A spade? A spade? Look, they just killed how many this week in Pakistan? One of those lovely pet predator drones. Hey, sorry, we missed. Hey, here's a headline from the Wall Street Journal. NATO admits Libya mishap. Hey, a mishap. We just wiped out your family and destroyed your house. Ruined your neighborhood. Sorry for the mishap. Could you imagine if that happened in the United States? Boy, the flags would go up. The band would be playing and they'd march us off to war. You're absolutely right. And, and most of what they said about Gaddafi strafing crowds turned out to not be true. It's like the throwing babies out of incubator stories. Now, people send me emails going, how dare you be for Gaddafi? I'm not for Gaddafi. Leave them alone in North Africa. We're in there to get the oil and the, and the water and the airports. It's sick. Gerald Salente, thanks for spending time with us. We look forward to speaking to you again soon, my friend. Hey, always great being on with you, Alex.